like the benefit is you can own the things end to end you can build something that's complete in sports things happen pretty quickly and we've got to respond very quickly welcome back to the DraftKings Life podcast I'm Rebecca a recruitment marketing specialist and on today's episode we're talking to teammates from one of the most fascinating teams here at DraftKings the work they are doing is disrupting the industry and changing how gaming companies work with data. I'm excited to have these two people from Sports Intelligence here to give us a glimpse into some of the innovative projects they are working on. Welcome Robin and Rohan to the DraftKings Life podcast. They're from the London office. Hello, Thanks. great to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's go. Awesome. So first question, what is Sports Intelligence at DraftKings? So Sports Intelligence was set up around two years ago in 2021. And the idea behind Sports Intelligence was a vertically integrated engineering product and analytic, analytics team really focused on um, driving content in-house. So we have not just data science, the, the sports data science team, we have data engineering, software engineering, analytics, and also dedicated product partners as well. The reason why we set up in that way was to try to reduce the amount of handoffs between teams as we're iterating through that content delivery journey. So as we're iterating, iterating on models, bringing in new data assets, trying to do more analysis, we wanted to make sure we reduce that, those bottlenecks, basically. Yeah, so sports intelligence, um, I'd say it's a single org dedicated to building great sports products. So things for our sports book primarily, but you know, we try and have a, like the best in class sports data great um, data scientists who are like experts in machine learning. We've got really good software engineers who can help us get stuff to production. Um, and yeah, having everyone together in that one unit all with the same goal and like same delivery um, like mindset has just been really great. Um, we, we just, yeah, we do well when the business do well and when we get loads of new products. That's awesome. And what are some of the sports models that you've worked on? So when I first joined the industry, I was actually tasked with working on Gaelic sports models. So things like Gaelic football and Gaelic hurling. Interesting. I'm not sure if that was a, a, a on a skills basis, probably more of a lack of skills basis. <laughs> but I was quickly promoted to working on some of the major UK sports, so soccer, horse racing, uh, tennis, that type of thing. But I've been fortunate fortunate enough in my career to work on most of the sports. But it's yeah l less frequent these days. I'm more mm. you know a people management type role. But. Awesome. Yeah, I, I started my career as yeah, a sports data scientist. I think the, the, yeah, the first thing I ever built was an ice hockey model, um, which wasn't very good. Um, <laughs> but I quite naturally, I very quickly found myself, I was a bit of a better software engineer than a data scientist. Um, so I've fallen into a, a bit of a niche where um, I don't do as much like day-to-day -day modeling, but we'll just try and help the sports teams um, you know, build their cool stuff. Um, so it means I yeah get to work on like every one of our sports models, all the major sports, but I'm not doing the fun, exciting modeling and more just, you know, trying to make it all work quietly behind the scenes. Awesome. <laughs> How does it make you feel knowing that you make such an impact on our products? You're creating the models for our products that our customers love. So you have a direct impact on the experience for our customers. How does that make you feel? Yeah, that's one thing that's really exciting about our team is that in lots of data science teams in different industries, it's very difficult to draw a straight line between the models you're building or the work you're doing and business value. And that's something that's very different in our team, which means that you know the, the models you're building, the content we're producing has a real material impact on our bottom line as a business. So it's really rewarding for most of the team, I think. Yeah, I think the the best thing is just, you know, you build something, you can go on DraftKings and have a look and you know, there's there's the odds, there's that number you generated. Um, like it's very, very tangible. And yeah, like, like Robin mentioned, like, um, you know, other data science teams don't always have that. Sometimes, you know, a lot of traditional modeling, like maybe you're doing, you know, a fraud model, it's sort of in the background and you're helping the business, but it's not as direct. And like, we have always been like a product facing team and we get to deliver products. Um, and it's awesome because I think most of the people in the team like, like our product too, they like betting um, and yeah, it's, it's good to be able to see something you can use, you can interact with, um, and that you, you care about. And when we're talking about the tech as a whole, what is unique about machine learning here at DraftKings? So what's unique about machine learning at DraftKings is that in many data science teams where they're building machine learning use cases, there's normally one or two machine learning models that are taking in some input and producing some output. What's really unique about DraftKings is we have these um, very complex simulation engines for each sport, and those simulation engines stack 
machine learning models on top of one another. So in our American football pricing engine, for example, we have around 15 to 20 machine learning models inside those engines. So they're extremely complicated. And because of the real time nature of the business, they have to be extremely, extremely performant as well. So we have to make in the order of six to 700 million inference predictions within sub second latency. So it's a real difficult problem to solve. And it's something that we're very confident at these days. So yeah, I think that yeah, lots of unique challenges to our machine learning. Um, so yeah, like all data science, a lot of domain expertise needed. We need you know people who know a lot about sports, are interested in sports, know the nuances of, of the various sports. Um, we we're a team that's always had like a big engineering focus. Um, so a lot of data science teams will traditionally you know go and build a model and then hand it to a different team that will try and get it running in production. We've tried to avoid that, and you know, all, every everyone in our team will be deploying to production. They'll be writing code that runs in production. Um, so yeah, means uh, the expectation you need uh, you know a little bit more software engineering skills than other roles. But like the benefit is you can own things end to end. You can really, you know, it, it you can build something that's it complete almost. Um, you know, there's there's help from other teams as well. But you know, you, you get a lot of autonomy there. Um, and yeah, Roman mentioned the sort of real time. You know. W- we we're not sort of high frequency trading level but we have pretty strict slas in sports things happen pretty quickly and we've got to respond very quickly um so it's it's a hard engineering challenge challenge at times as well which is yeah one of the things i really love that's so cool because you're right it's that real time it's that quickness yeah and you can't predict it either um but i also want to learn more about the culture of the team what's it like working on your team in the london office Yeah, so probably the most unique thing these days is that we have a pretty strong in-office presence. So most of the team are in the office three days a week on average. So it's a unique experience these days to have such a strong cohort of folks making it in most days. So it's helped us build and foster a pretty strong team culture and working environment where kind of everyone feels confident to voice their unique points of view or perspectives. And we have a very like flat working environment, or working culture as well. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. The nice thing about um, yeah being in London is it's a fairly small group. I think there's probably seventy um, people, seventy staff in London, and about twenty to thirty in our team. Um, so yeah, you get a bit of that, like you know, slightly more intimate. And people know each other a little bit better. Um, you know, familiar faces in the office, which is really awesome. Um, the thing I like about like our culture and our team is, um, yeah, I, I never be want to. I never want to be working on a team where I'm the cleverest person. Like, there's loads of people who know a lot more stuff than me, and I can learn things. Um, and I think, yeah, we we really try and leverage that. Um, we have yeah, lots of like in office sessions to, for like our lunch and learns, and um, yeah, WWWs, which is I think our Wednesday waffle and whiteboards. Yeah, yeah whiteboard waffle <laughs> Wednesdays. Whoa. Yeah. WWW. Yeah. So that I want to come to one of those. <laughs> So yeah, people will just you know sort of grab grab in a room, look at a blog post they found interesting, discuss it, um, try and get some cool ideas. Um, so yeah, yeah, we have that like very open like learning culture, which I think is really awesome. I agree. I think having people that are so intelligent, so in talent, so talented around you really lifts you up, and kind of you want to perform at that level too. Completely. And so many people have different skills that you can lean on and learn from, and having that culture of oh, you, can, you know how to do this? Teach me how to do it too because you want to just build yeah. each other up. So I think that's awesome. Um, what kind of skills does a candidate need to have in order to thrive on this team? Yeah, so Rohan will probably allude to the more technical skills needed <laughs> for the role. But from just a people operations perspective, um, one of the DK behaviors is acting like an owner. And that's something that our team does incredibly well. As Rohan said, there's the team have a real passion for the product and rather than kind of raise complaints or potential issues where something's not working in another team, our team tries to go the extra mile to you know break down those barriers, remove those bottlenecks, and try and get their products shipped, basically. So yeah, acting like an owner, really engaging with the product and really caring about the customer is something that you know our team does really well. And any candidate that's looking in to move into this type of role, if you really care about the, the product and the work you're doing and you really want to drive business impacts, will really serve you well, I think. Yeah, we, we have quite a, like, a fairly wide range of backgrounds of people who've come from the team. Like, it's generally some sort of quantitative degree. Um, people have started as sort of traders in, in areas, data science in other industries. Um, but the things we really like, or, or, what people have in common is like, yeah, strong Python skill set. So we use all the classic data science stuff, you know, pandas, NumPy, scikit-learn, XGBoost. 
and there's probably others I forget. <laughs> um, then like we use a lot of um, also like yeah deployment packages. Like, I think your fast API, your Flask, um, like on the tech side. Um, I think knowledge of other languages is all, also handy as well. Like the DraftKings as a whole is a C sharp company, so if you know a bit of C sharp, it, it doesn't go amiss. Um, and then yeah, on the like yeah, we um, we're building products. Um, so that product mindset, um, knowledge of sports, you know, a bit of familiarity with betting, like goes a long way. And you both have worked on many different projects from even the inception of the team. But what's a project you're really proud of? Yeah, so for folks who are familiar with our, our investor days or our shareholder letters and those kind of things, one project that we've been a key part of this year, although you know not the only part, it's, it's a huge engineering and product initiative across the business, but we successfully brought our SGP product in-house. So we were... You know, historically dependent on a third party for that product but our team was critical in building the models and the capability to bring SGPs in house for the major US sports so NFL, NBA, MLB and NHL as well. Yeah for, for me um, yeah I think one of the biggest projects I've worked on is like to continuing to develop our ML platform um, so yeah I, I think I do my job well when I make other people's lives easier uh, and we invested a lot of time this year on um, yeah setting up Databricks and you know building up some of those more rigorous MLOps frameworks so our team can like move faster. There's easier ways to build models. It, we've got yeah better data sources. Um, like basically making you know trying to remove all the hard and boring bits about data science, like struggling to access data, struggling to you know do your analysis, and you know mean meaning people can spend more time on the fun and problems and like predicting what's going to happen in sports. Um, and then last question, what's the best piece of career advice you've ever seen? So it's hard to pin down a single piece of advice from you know, all of my mentors throughout my career, but I had a mentor early in my career who, he was you know, a strong economist and really into economics, and he always used to allude to this Thomas Sowell quote, which was, there are, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. And that's something that I always keep in mind when walk, talking through any kind of data science problem is that you know, you, perfect is the enemy of good. So you can have the, you know, most perfect algorithm, but it's going to take a huge amount of time and maybe incur a huge amount of cost. So it's keeping all of those trade-offs in mind to try and get to some, you know, MVP of, for a data science model, get something in market quickly that works end-to-end -end, and then iterate, iterate on it from there. But, you know, I think that quote kind of, you know, holds well across lots of different spaces in engineering as well. Love it. Yeah, for me, I think, yeah, uh, lots of different pieces of advice at different points in the career. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, acting like an owner has always been, like, massive. It's a, it's a DK value, but it's one I think our team takes super seriously. Um, we're empowered to go and, you know, do the things we want to do. Um, but, you know, you need to have the right mindset to go and do it. You know, don't, don't be blocked by other teams. If there's problems, raise them. Um, and I think, like, it's... It, yeah, it's. I try and embo embody that, and I think it it really it really helps with um yeah ev everything everything you work on. Like if you take the ownership, you take the initiative, you drive it, you'll be successful. It pro probably applies to all careers as well. Um, yeah, and then I guess I've I've had other career advice as well. Rob Robin was my first boss in a in a previous job, and he basically taught me what data science was. So <laughs> that that was pretty handy. Um, <laughs> so you guys go way back. Yeah, I was yeah. learning at the time as well. <laughs> <laughs> Helping each other. That's that's the name of the game, right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, I have learned so much this episode <laughs> all about our sports intelligence team, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, so for, thanks having for having us. And thank you for listening. Make sure to follow us on social media at DraftKings Life, except for LinkedIn, where we're simply DraftKings. This podcast is available on all major podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google. We got you. Be sure to download, listen, and even throw us a five-star rating. Thanks so much, and have a great day. Thanks.